Buenas tardes, bienvenidos a la Nueva Zelanda. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to this uh, event, this uh, uh, debate on uh, youth and, uh, act and activism, and which is in the framework of the cycle of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and its South Mediterranean program based in Tunisia. It has brought approximately some 20 young people, some activists from the Arab world to Madrid, both uh, from the east and the west of the Mediterranean. And in Casa Arabe, we have wanted to uh, make the best possible use of this uh, encounter, the synergies that it uh, offers, uh, and that we would like to uh, uh, use to this opportunity to speak to these young people, to this public forum, in order to hear them, to learn from their experiences and uh, be better informed about what's going on. Since the first uh, uh, uprisings in Tunisia in December 2010, the Arab world was never the same. Uh, enthusiasm was contagious. Uh, ben Ali, Mubarak, both uh, were toppled. And the voices of the people that have been silenced for decades uh, broke out uh, uh, in a cry in that world uh, uh, set. And the term Arab Spring was coined and embraced by the media and also by analysts. There was romantic uh, uh, reminiscence of uh, Prague 1968, but also its evolution uh, would become dramatic. Uh, four years later, the situation is entirely different. The spirit of that spring has often been reduced to a, lo to a long winter of discontent. And in some countries, such as Syria, Libya, and Yemen, uh, that ended in uh, disastrous civil wars in Egypt, a transition to a potentially democratic government was brought to a halt by very profound political divisions, a military coup, a crisis uh, in, in their economy, and also a crisis in their uh, national institutions. And although Tunisia seems to have been managed to escape polarization, and it seems to be uh, walking towards a better future, it still is in a fragile social and economic situation. The Middle East has been undergoing a real change in its uh, demographic structure. This uh, increase of youth has no uh, uh, record in the past. There's a 30% increase of its population uh, in the ages between 15 and 29. And that is 100 million young people. Never before has this uh, figure been achieved, and it's the largest percentage ever in the history of the region. Uh, the economic situation, despite being generally underdeveloped uh, in most of the Arab world and under difficult circumstances in the political context, which is very delicate, uh, volatile, or even in some cases, catastrophic, um, excessive corruption, discrimination of the opposition, youth in the Arab world is a first uh, line player in the transformations of society. It is precisely in these recent social revolutions in the Arab world where we see the role of youth in society and the mobilization for a common cause during specific uh, unseen moments, uh, discrepancy in thinking or in the idea logical mosaic didn't matter, and uh, young youth movements uh, got together to take the streets every, uh, with uh, peaceful demonstrations that um, people went to see uh, en masse, combined and built from diversity and with uh, very different doctrinal, political, and identity um, element. With this turning point, uh, um, it, with these uh, youth revolutionary movements, um, it, it is the time to, to replace uh, the uh, toppled uh, tyrants and go on. But um, 
Some movements uh, became political parties and um, uh, organizations and civil society organizations. And the question is, well, how can young people recover their their uh, this vital role in so uh, the Arab world in their societies to change at different levels, guaranteeing values, uh, rights. Uh, 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 that those who took to the streets were were demanding and risked their lives for. I'm going to speak about, with us, we have four people with, who are reason for hope, building democratic culture, even if it's fledgling in some cases, and facing very many obstacles. But here we are to listen to them, to their stories, their stories of success, their initiatives. And today we have with us four young people as I was saying, uh, two girls, two boys, one, uh, two from the west, two from the east of the Mediterranean. Uh, two, uh, my left, is uh, Gaida Kuda, member of the Citizen Participation Program of the National Democratic Institute of Jordan, which works in uh, fostering participation of uh, Jordan youth in building a democratic environment uh, for dialogue. And it already counts with 20,000 participants to her left is Omar Asu. He's a salient activist in the Moroccan civil society. He coordinates the regional uh, regional coordinator of the movement uh, for Moroccan organization of young volunteers. He also received an award for commitment to innovation from the, the U.S. Department of State. To his left is Zaya Shamli, specialist in trade, innovation, and competitiveness, uh, which uh, she works in in the USAID at uh, its uh, Tunisian headquarters, and she's participated in several institutions to promote uh, youth leadership and the empowerment of women. And at the other end of the stage, we have Andre Sliman. He is the director of programs of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation in Beirut. He's a program manager there, uh, and he specializes in uh, local administration and, and decentralized uh, administration and also has a vast experience in democratic uh, governance, political analysis, human rights, and elections, and citizens' campaigns, and their organization. So thank you very much for being here. We're going to hear from you first some 10 minutes. We'd like to hear about your experience in your respective associations and initiatives. Then we will have a, uh, a tour of uh, Q&A uh, Q here uh, among yourselves if you want to ask yourselves and have comments to make to each other here, after which we would have a Q&A with the public. So, uh, Gaida, you have your 10 minutes. Hello, everybody. Uh, unfortunately, I don't speak uh, Spanish, but uh, I'm intending to learn as soon as I get back to Jordan. Uh, I came from Jordan, uh, which youth population is 70% uh, uh, among the population uh, in Jordan, according to the UN. Uh, and this is why I have so, uh, some passion in youth development, as uh, Mr. Karim introduced me that I work in uh, the National Democratic Institute for International Affairs with the Youth uh, Political Participation Program. Uh, our program is uh, operating in a 25 Jordanian university in Jordan, which has two phases. The first phase is uh, aiming at uh, establishing platforms for uh, youth uh, in Jordan, all around Jordan, to discuss issues related to democracy, human rights, political parties, and electoral process. And the second phase uh, where we uh, train our students on uh, advocacy campaigns. So they uh, led campaigns to change issues related to their community or to amend uh, laws. Uh, uh, for me in Jordan, I feel that the youth are excluded somehow by the government uh, as they face economic, political, and social uh, uh, exclusion uh, there, which keeps them a bit away from the uh, real participation. And other, uh, uh, another uh, case is that we had the Arab Spring, and the countries around us, you know, we are located in a hot spot in uh, Jordan. So the people there, we might say, a bit afraid of having a real participation. And this is uh, why we have the uh, CSOs there uh, aiming at uh, 
building uh, programs to uh, engage youth uh, more in uh, the civil uh, life. Uh, for example, if I can uh, mention some uh, uh, local uh, projects, uh, we have uh, something called Diwani in Jordan, which is an open and free uh, debate that uh, aims at put together people in a public space. We can have it maybe in uh, a park or in uh, uh, any place in Jordan to discuss uh, issues related to the community there. Uh, and we have also uh, some uh, debate clubs uh, that aim at, at engaging uh, youth in the civil uh, society. Uh, actually, from my experience, I can see that uh, maybe youth uh, who lives far uh, from the capital, which is Amman, uh, are more uh, are more passionate about uh, joining the civil society life and uh, creating change, uh, due to the fact that their situation where they live, that they don't have that opportunities. So they they always look at any chance as an opportunity for uh, development. Uh, for example, one of the uh, youth campaigns that we work at is aiming at lowering the age or decreasing uh, the age of candidacy at the parliament from 30 to 25. Uh, and they have been uh, uh, meeting uh, and discussing this issue with the uh, parliament and decision makers in uh, Jordan. And they built some coalition with the political parties, uh, which in Jordan, the political parties are not active at all. We are about 9 million people in Jordan, and we have 30 political parties, but none of them is uh, active or doing their role. So in Jordan, we have the union trades taking over the uh, role of political parties, which also uh, creates some problems for people in uh, Jordan. Uh, uh, other than uh, that, if I may talk uh, a little uh, bit about why we don't have that uh, much of youth uh, uh, engaging in Jordan, that we, are, we have the Syrian uh, refugee crisis, and uh, the government somehow is struggling with uh, the inclusion of Syrian and Jordanian people in uh, projects, uh, as well as that uh, somehow the, the government is a bit afraid of uh, uh, the terrorist uh, groups that are operating from Syria and Iraq, which we share borders uh, with them. And we have some cases where, uh, let's say, uh, well-educated and intellectual youth joined th these groups, and one of them was uh, the son of some of the MPs at the parliament. Uh, so I, I do believe that the case in Jordan is a bit, a bit uh, yeah, we can say that we have some conflict uh, in this uh, matter due to uh, many uh, factors which uh, forbidden youth from, uh, let's say, a real uh, uh, activism in uh, the country. Bien, gracias, Raida. Algunos puntos importantes, me parece, en este... Uh, thank you. I think you've touched upon some interesting elements that uh, the, the training of the of young people to gain in self confidence and overcome that fear, as you said, uh, of becoming involved in the political life of, uh, of the country. And I've also found uh, interesting, well, and this is something we can pick up later, the, the aspect of decentralization and how in many parts of the world, capitals are finally, uh, and at the end of the day, the political center of uh, parties, parliamentarians, as you have said, but at the same time, it is also beyond and outside the city where there's more interest in participate in being able to part take part of this uh, political life. So the absence of opportunities, on the one hand, with a greater interest. So now, uh, with your second, uh, our second, uh, or your second intervention, how can we channel these aspirations of youth uh, beyond Amman and the capital for when you uh, 
speak later. Uh, Omar Sue now. As I was saying, Omar Sue is Moroccan and he's got several hats, among which the coordinator of uh, the Moroccan Organization of Young Volunteers, member of a par uh, uh, youth parliament in parallel. What are you going to talk to us about out of uh, your very many initiatives and activities? Um, uh, first of all, um, I'm from Morocco. Uh, as um, Omar, can you, can you put your headphones on the side? Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I'm a president of a, a youth association, and uh, I'm a member of, of so many, uh, including uh, a regional coordinator of uh, the Moroccan uh, organization of young uh, volunteers and a uh, Moroccan youth climate movement and I'm a political activist. Um, in Youth of Time Youth Association, which um, I'm uh, its president, uh, we um, in our region uh, before 2008 uh, we um, a lot of young people like me uh, we were struggling. We don't have anything to uh, somewhere to um, organize our activities, uh, like NGOs or associations or, uh, or anything. So we came up with uh, with the idea of uh, establishing our association, our own association, uh, to. Uh, empower ourselves and to uh, help um, students and young people of our region uh, in uh, civic engagement, civic education, and to empower them to be uh, an, uh, agents of change and, um, and uh, success in, in our, uh, our region. Uh, Afterwards, I've been uh, a participant in a program with the U.S. government. It's called the, uh, Leaders for Democracy. It's a MAP program, Middle East Partnership Initiative. Um, it's a program uh, in Lebanon, in the American University of Beirut. Uh, back then, I, 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 I had an internship within a Lebanese association. It's called Le Mouvement Social, Haraka Jitimaia, Social Movement. And with them, I, I, I had the chance to, um, to learn uh, from a lot of their programs. And one of their programs was uh, municip my municipality. They uh, teach young people and students about the role of the municipality, how to uh, be elected, how to, um, to uh, participate in elections and everything. So when I came back in Morocco, uh, I said, why, why not to do uh, some program uh, like my municipality? So um, with some of my colleagues, we, uh, we had an idea of uh, our program, which is Youth Listen on Politics. It's a, a program that aims to uh, help uh, young Moroccans to be politically engaged. Uh, because uh, we noticed that uh, a lot of them uh, don't participate in, 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 in the political life. So according to the World Bank report, uh, they said that the uh, young people ages of 15 and 89, uh, which are the third uh, population of, of Morocco, but less than one percent of them are participating in the in the uh, political scene and uh, less than uh, 50 percent of, of those uh, young people doesn't or don't consider participating in the legislative elections as as their priority so uh, we came with this program uh, to to help or 
to make them aware of their role in the society and their role in the political scene. Uh, so uh, our program is two phases. The uh, first phase is an uh, academic program. We train uh, our participants in uh, what is the constitution, what is the parliament, the role of the parliament, um, uh, the uh, legislative uh, power and judiciary and executive power and the uh, election law and uh, parties law and everything related to politics. Uh, we, work in, we are working with uh, Ibn Zahar University professors uh, in, in Agadir and uh, Qadi Ayyad University in Marrakesh. Uh, so they came uh, to, to our universities. They uh, give workshops about those, those topics. Uh, and we, have, we are having uh, our second phase, which is a, a leadership uh, phase. We'll give our participants like workshops in, in, in um, public speaking, in advocacy, in fundraising, and, and uh, uh, every uh, skills which will help them to be uh, politically engaged. And we'll uh, organize uh, meetings with uh, MPs, uh, with ministers, and uh, some public uh, institution uh, officers. Uh, at the end of the, at the end of the program, we'll fund some ideas of our participants to apply what they will get from the program in their uh, regions, in their communities, in their associations. Uh, we just finished our first phase, and we saw a lot of. Uh, engagement, a lot of uh, good impact of our program. Like there are uh, like two of our participants uh, who participated in the last elections uh, in Morocco uh, in the uh, regional uh, elections. Uh, two of our participants are uh, are participating in an exchange program with with the U.S. Embassy and the Leaders for Democracy uh, program. One of our participants are going to the U.S. in the Student Leaders uh, program. Uh, we have uh, like five or six of our participants are ambassadors of a, of a, a website. It's a website for uh, who is connecting the citizens with the MPs. So if some, some, yeah, I mean, any citizens who wants to ask any MP about something, they just go there and ask them in, in the website. So these uh, participants are the uh, ambassadors of, of, of that program. Uh, we still uh, we're still waiting for for the second phase, so to uh, deepen our uh, information or or our uh, program for to make those uh, group of uh, young people to be uh, politically engaged and why not to be uh, our next Moroccan uh, political elite. And uh, so they give us this honor to uh, s that we are the 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 main uh, cause of that. So this is uh, Youth Less Long Politics Program, and uh, we thank uh, the uh, Casa Arabi for this opportunity to to talk about it. And we thank uh, we thank also the Conrad Adenauer Foundation for for this opportunity. Uh, thank you uh, for having us. Thank you, gracias, eh, gracias, Omar. Thank you. Um, bueno, pues es es eh, creo que en realidad los, los, los cuatro, los cuatro I think that eh, all four participants eh, here today have a very clear idea that among their goals is promoting political participation. 
Morocco and Jordan. In that wave of uprisings or popular revolts in the Arab, the so-called Arab Spring, have played. Uh, well, there has been, sorry, an absence of major commotions. As uh, Gaida was saying, her sh her neighbors are truly in a in a extremely delicate situations in Syria, and its stability and its political normalcy is absolutely threatened. In the case of Morocco, it is noteworthy because because of the stability that uh, reigns there for since uh, a long time ago. Despite all this, in everything that has happened, there haven't been any um, swings in the country's political stability. Among the major challenges is overcoming the apathy of uh, young people so that they do truly uh, play an active role in Moroccan political parties. Possibly the fact that there has been this, that the scope of the political changes has been small. The, in the Moroccan political uh, scene. We need to generate a new dynamic, a new dynamic within political parties for them to uh, make an outreach to young people. I think uh, Aya, uh, to your left, Omar is also going to speak about that, uh, the role of the internet, the uh, uh, because we tend to always assimilate it to Western culture, but all the services and political institutions are brought again to life because there's a whole new world out there in the media. And uh, Aya Shamli works in Tunisia. I take it that she also has a project linked to the political participation by youth with uh, an arm or branch uh, into the internet. So Aya, we would very much like to hear about your work. So uh, my name is Eya Shamli, I'm from Tunisia. As you know, Tunisia has been like the model for this democratic process as we succeeded to adapt the constitution and also to have stable institutions. Uh, so uh, I'm a student in business, so I uh, have a major in finance, but fortunately when I was in university, I had the chance to discover civic engagement through clubs, through, uh, through NGOs, because when the revolution happened, I was uh, in a, fresh, a freshman. So there was the, this like associative emergence and I was very, very happy to be part of this, uh, this uh, dynamic and this participation. Uh, so I really discovered that civic engagement uh, is something that is really rewarding and that will help you in your everyday life. Uh, so I started working in some NGOs like youth-led NGOs like the World Youth Alliance, uh, where I was trained on uh, on like human dignity, human rights, on democracy, something that I really didn't understand because we lived in 23 years of dictatorship. We didn't know anything about what is even our rights. And uh, so I decided after this uh, volunteering activities to work in the civil society. Uh, and I started my professional, uh, I mean, experience within a small project initiated by the British Council and the Euro-Mediterranean Human Rights Network. 
and it's actually something that was aimed to answer the needs of civil society, which is having kind of platform that will gather all the actors of civil society and which will be the kind of federating all these actors but also providing access to information. Because the first step towards civic engagement is to be informed of the opportunities for youth uh, the actors of civil society, whether it is local NGOs or funders, donors, also the interventions, how the interventions are structured and what kind of amount, uh, what's the main priorities of the civil society now and how it can change within, uh, I mean, uh, the periods. Uh, so the project uh, is, name is Jamayati. Jamayati means my association in Arabic. Uh, so uh, I worked as a as a relationship manager, and we are actually a youth-led project. The um, uh, we are all. I mean, the maximum age was 25 years old, and we really managed to to like do something big about this project. As now it has grown into an NGO, and we are doing our own activities. We are working on promoting uh, communication for youth as a way to counter the terrorism. Um, so, uh, as to talk about the youth in Tunisia, uh, our revolution was based on the youth um, claims and the youth needs. And unfortunately, now after years, after five years, we are uh, witnessing a lack of trust, especially from youth in political institutions. They are just not interested in, in civic engagement. Uh, as a report of the World Bank uh, sites, only 8% eight, uh, uh, eight percent of rural youth trust political institutions and only 31% of urban youth trust uh, political institution. So like uh, pub poli youth policies are ghosts in Tunisia, uh, we really need to focus on implementing adequate youth policies uh, because youth are the future, youth are the ones who led this revolution, so it's quite fair to, to answer to their needs. Um, um, and also, I think that the social media and the, I mean, Facebook, Twitter, all these uh, social media tools played a big role in uh, in in federating these uh, youth, uh, especially in this critical period. So, uh, but uh, for example, for urban youth, it is easy to access internet, but in the disadvantaged regions, you don't have access to internet. They are not informed, they are not, they don't know their rights, they don't know what's the, their interest in being civically engaged. So that's uh, our project, the Jamaiti project is working on. It's working on trying to be close to these people in the, in the rural region through promoting the platform, but also through uh, creating magazines, uh, regular magazines that will, uh, that will inform them about the actualities of civil society, the main, uh, the main issues. Uh, I also worked after uh, after this, I worked in uh, a USAID-funded project because I really wanted to focus on the economic empowerment. Because now, as you know, uh, the adoption, uh, the constitution has been adopted. Uh, the democracy is doing relatively well, but the economy is quite fragile in Tunisia. Unemployment, especially youth unemployment, is a big issue. And so I'm working on a youth and uh, unemployment project that aims to try to help youth in fighting quality employment and sustainable employment. So uh, I think that youth unemployment is an issue because when youth um, are not um, are marginalized, marginalized and uh, cannot even find like the basic social uh, rights which is being employed, uh, they don't find interest in trusting or even in participating in uh, in the civic life. So, um, so uh, 
Yes, so what I think the solution is really to try to empower at first step youth policies, trying to create spaces where youth can interact, can, uh, can, can express themselves easily. It's easy for uh, youth to express themselves in university, in high school, but it's not easy for them to express themselves directly to the government because they don't see the point. They don't feel that they are listened or even that the government is answering their needs. Uh, and there's, uh, we need to pull the focus back on the economic growth now for Tunisia because, uh, I mean, unemployment is a big issue and uh, I mean, this political uh, stability needs, needs to be linked to the economic stability in order to move forward with this democratic transition and in order to really confirm that this, uh, this democratic, democratic transition and the people that were uh, died for, uh, I mean, for, for this country were worth it. Um, so that's all, uh, <laughs> that's all, I mean, that's my experience. So uh, thank you for this opportunity. And if you have any questions, I'm available. Muchas gracias, uh, Aya. Desde luego, Túnez está en el, en el centro de, de los países de la primavera árabe y sobre todo and especially when we speak of uh, examples to learn from and to follow, uh, there's a small uh, ray of uh, light, of hope, uh, as opposed to others in which uh, they are turning back and it's uh, going back uh, uh, and there's this need and duty to uh, give information so that young people know what the rights are, how to use information and giving them access to it in reaching everyone. As uh, uh, Kada was saying at the start, or places that aren't the capital uh, of, the, of the country and don't have what we here at Capitals consider access to normal sources of information, social media, and so on. And one of the cornerstones is unquestionably uh, economic opportunities. Uh, unemployment, as uh, Aya also mentioned en passant, uh, that have a lot to, to do in many cases with uh, the radicalization of part of uh, uh, young people who don't see a future, don't know what their rights are, don't know what possibilities they have to channel their, either their interests or their frustrations and uh, that are a very easy target of radical messages. Let's go on with Andreas Slayman, who's going to talk to us about his experience in Beirut uh, uh, with the Conrad Adenauer Foundation. Thank you, Karim. And, uh Thanks to the Casa Arabe for uh, this invitation. Uh, I am here to talk mainly about uh, an electoral campaign called Beirut Madinati, in which I have had the honor of being very heavily involved. Uh, Beirut Madinati means in Arabic, Beirut, my city. Uh, it is an electoral campaign uh, for during the municipal elections in Beirut. Uh, which has the specialty that it's not being led by a political party, it's not conducted by a political established entity, it is a civic movement that emerged from civil society actors, uh, academics and young professionals in order to reclaim their city and uh, instead of uh, demonstrating and uh, demanding their rights, decided to run for elections and uh, become uh, the elite. Um, in, in, in Lebanon, we are witnessing a kind of um, political impasse. We haven't had elections since six years, which is quite unusual for a country that has been known relatively for its democracy, like Lebanon. Uh, the parliament extended its own term twice until 2017. There has been no elected president since two years now. And uh, municipal elections in 2000, now in May 2016 were the first opportunity after these six years to really uh, exert our rights as citizens and, and 
elect people who represent us. The only thing is that um, the grassroots movements that, that is Beirut Madinati considered that uh, given the current uh, configuration in Lebanon, no one uh, was representing people who really wanted services, who really wanted you know, to have a livable city in exchange for the taxes, the heavy taxes that ha they have been paying, uh, considered that the political establishment uh, has been ruling for over 30 years and you know the same uh, old faces who have been involved in many scandals in, uh, even during the Lebanese war. So uh, instead of uh, just limiting ourselves to uh, demanding and demonstrating, uh, we have decided to run for elections under um, the, the slogan of uh, Beirut Madinati. Um, basically, we started, uh, we became public in February 2016, which is three months ago. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the rubbish crisis in Lebanon. I think this is mostly what people have been hearing for a year now. In August 2015, there has been um, a government uh, gridlock because of uh, a big disagreement over um, um, over managing the rubbish crisis, so basically hiring a private company to uh, dispose of solid waste. But behind this uh, basic uh, governance issue lied uh, a big, uh, many economic interests and kind of uh, pie sharing amongst uh, the, the ruling elite. So uh, during uh, three months, uh, Lebanon uh, was, as you may have seen the pictures, was um, under, uh, you know, a bit, the streets were a bit smelly and you could see garbage being thrown on the streets with no, uh, no one to remove it. So of course this triggered a very heavy popular reaction and a series of mobilizations uh, mainly known under, uh, as the U-Sting campaign, U-Sting referring to the uh, class of politicians. Uh, however, this also, this um, mobilization and these demonstrate, uh, demonstrations also cam came to a dead end because a part of, uh, you know, just claiming our rights and uh, in view of the, the resilience of, uh, of, the, of the ruling class, it became clear that just demanding our rights wasn't enough and uh, running for elections and reclaiming our city was the uh, one best option in order to become citizen and to recover our dignity again. So how did this happen? Uh, it's a pro bono or a volunteering structure. Uh, we all have our work, uh, we all uh, have our occupation, uh, yet after our work we, start, we organize ourselves uh, Starting September 2015, I joined in October 2015. Um, we had to elaborate the mission, the vision, the goals of uh, of the of the campaign. Uh, we organized ourselves in different committees. There was a steering committee, a program committee, uh, in which I was heavily involved, the legal committee, uh, and also a fundraising committee. And I must tell you that uh, we had no money uh, from the moment we declared our list we received over $500,000 donations uh, online and from private donors, from individual donors. Uh, this did not came, you know, very easily. We were basically uh, holding meetings every day and with the potential donors, even Skype meetings with the Lebanese from the diaspora. And some of them even have had the generosity of giving us $50,000 in one go. And which everything is, is published on our website and even on indiegogo.com where we had our uh, crowned uh, sourcing campaign. So we are pr very proud of this as achievement. Uh, many media also um, showed empathy and gave us free airtime. Uh, so we were also present in leading uh, broadcasting companies without having to pay uh, anything. Uh, taxi uh, taxi um, companies also offer taxis on election day to help voters, you know, come and vote for us. Also, food companies uh, donated food for all the volunteers who were working on election day. We also developed an application. Uh, to register voters and uh, and volunteers, which all were fed into a, a database in order to be able to contact them again if we need any assistance on the ground or even on election day if they need any kind of assistance to come and vote for us. Um, we organize, of course, fundraising dinners, concerts, many Lebanese um, artists and musicians uh, 
gave a free concert, you know, all the proceedings of which, uh, you know, went to, to Beirut, Medina. He also organized a series of uh, open air debates with city residents, uh, which witnessed about uh, our primary concern, which is the citizens. We are all citizens, we all live uh, in the same city, and we really th think that uh, a municipality, local government, is here to provide services and not to uh, divide the pie between, uh, between uh, politicians. Um, so, basically, the elections took place on Sunday, the 8th of May. We didn't win, but we had 35% of the votes, which for a movement that started publicly in February, three months ago, uh, is quite impressive. I mean, uh, I must say, even if I'm very biased, uh, it was a defeat, but with an aftertaste of victory. Uh, we were all a bit disappointed that day, but uh, we congratulated each other. We were very proud of, uh, of, uh, of each other. We worked uh, day and night. I even took off from my job for three days because I was working in the electoral machine. Um, and what is striking is that the, our opponents were all the other parties. So you imagine, let's say, in Spain, you had the right-wing party, the left-wing party, the communist party, the liberal party, the... I don't know, all the possible parties that are in, the, in, in power, they were all on one list against us. And we managed to gather 35%, whereas they got 55%. So, because it's a majority voting system, it's a plurality of vote, they still got the plurality of vote, which uh, you know, gave them full representation. We weren't able to break that iron door, but... Um, this, uh, this movement uh, created a ripple effect in other Lebanese municipalities, so we started uh, seeing um, electoral campaigns named Junia Madinati, Balbek Madinati, Babda Madinati. So it was quite an inspirational uh, feat of which we are very proud, but now we are in the preparation phase for the next elections and the uh, um, and also the uh, the, um, the oversight and scrutiny role which we, are, which we committed ourselves to, it started as an adventure uh, five, six months ago, and now it's a responsibility. 35% of the voters in Beirut voted for us, so now we have to carry this weight, uh, this responsibility, and really try to bring their, their voice to, uh, in, in public. And just to draw a quick conclusion, it is basically the shift from being civil society actors who, who are qualified professionals, who have worked on the ground, who know the people. So it's the shift from being a civil society to being really a political movement and a civic movement, the focus of which are citizens and not you know, economic interests. Thank you. Muchas gracias, eh, eh, André. Y creo que no es, no es un un lugar común si, si hablamos de, de Líbano como uno de los, eh, de los países, de los lugares con eh, mayor eh, dinamismo eh, a nivel social. También. One of the most dynamic countries, dynamically in, so, in social affairs and everything uh, that this term uh, comprises, but the this resilience in adversity, this ability to reinvent itself that Lebanon has, and also uh, of achieving uh, uh, source, uh, ways to uh, uh, innovate with crowdsourcing, etc., and crowdfunding. But um, it is so an initiative such as Beirut Madinati has known how to capitalize on uh, all this. It truly, your, the results, uh, uh, the electoral results were, were magnificent, 35%. And one of the questions that uh, comes to my head is in these, uh, that elections at times of uh, Let's call them the political adventure or excitement 
that uh, uh, later leads to a uh, lapse in, uh, in time during which you need to build on it with initiatives. It's adventures, you said, versus responsibility, which uh, so you need to build on that first adventure to later work, and that's where citizens' responsibility lies. And that's what uh, I was uh, very interested in before opening up uh, uh, the Q&A for the public. How do you define citizenship uh, in each of the contexts of your respective countries? What is it for you, for example, Gaida, what does, it, does citizenship consist of uh, for you in, in Jordan? Uh, well, uh, I think the question is a bit broad, uh, uh, and it has uh, different uh, aspects. But, but for me, I think that uh, being an active citizenship is mainly, uh, at least in uh, Jordan, let's say, uh, or for myself, uh, to uh, know who you will uh, elect in the elections who will represent you in the uh, elections, especially that in Jordan we still uh, have the election process based on the tribes. So if I am uh, from X uh, family and there is someone who is uh, uh, a candidate in the election, I will go and uh, elect him without uh, going back to the, to the program or anything that he will uh, achieve uh, uh, on, uh, on the parliament. Uh, so m maybe the first step is uh, be more aware of uh, what is uh, the duties that as a citizen I have uh, to do uh, and of course the rights uh, that I need to gain. Uh, but for me as a first step maybe the election is uh, the essence of uh, being an active citizen. Mm -hmm. Omar, tienes, uh, do you have a specific point of view of citizenship in, in Morocco? Yeah, um, I think that to be, um, let's say, a good citizen, uh, you have to do your uh, duties, like uh, to, um, um, to respect uh, uh, institutions, to uh, to do what you have to do, if if we if if if, if we can say that, um, to uh, bo to be uh, civically engaged in your community, in your small community, in your house, in your home, in your school, in your association, uh, to give uh, uh, positive examples to to the others, to. Uh, to participate in elections, to express your your vote, your voice, uh, your voice, to um, to say not to uh, to to say no to corruption, to uh, intolerance, to hatred, to all uh, the things that can uh, damage our 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 society. This this is the good citizen for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, do you think uh, is it is it different to be a, a citizen in a republic than to be a citizen in a monarchy? You think? Uh, of course, <laughs> I agree with. I mean, with my two colleagues, uh, it is important to vote. It's important to do your duty, but it's also important for me to be an active citizen. Is to really follow all the process to try to vote, but then to follow all the governmental interventions to try to influence and to raise your voice to, um, uh, to influence public policy and even to participate in implementing some of them and also to monitor regularly these uh, how these public policies are implemented uh, because at the end all these strategies are, will be affecting us so we need to really be aware and really participate in all this process. Mm -hmm. Not only casting a vote. Mm -hmm. uh, André, I have a friend uh, who's half Lebanese who thinks that the future of the region would be uh, states in which probably a state is not that necessary, like Lebanon. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
uh, it is a power sharing democracy where uh, citizenship, citizenship is problematic because uh, first of all we define ourselves by family second by community, religious community in a country where I would say 35% are Christian, 65% are Muslim, and it's, again, it's, I mean, one cannot read it like that, uh, black and white, even with our divides within political and religious divides within each. Um, and so identity politics play a big role, and this is reflected in our party, uh, in our political parties, which are more about identity than about programma programmatic uh, visions of uh, of politics. So the problem of uh, pro of uh, of uh, citizenship in Lebanon is that the individual is uh, there's a tension, sometimes a harmony, sometimes a discrepancy between one's identity as member of a religious community, as let's say a Christian in the Middle East, which which plays a big a big part in one's consciousness, even a, a Shiite Muslim in the majority Sunni Middle East on the one hand, and two, uh, as being a national of a state, uh, we, are, we all have the same need for public services, we all uh, have the same, uh, the, the same need for policy, for uh, the rule of law, for an independent judiciary, on the other hand. So this is where uh, you have common ground on the one hand and divides and cleavages on the other hand. So it's a constant, um, it's a constant uh, relationship between both. And uh, there is a need for movements, again, like Beirut Madinati, who brought these people together. We were all from different communities, and yet belonging to different communities really was totally irrelevant, and it did not play any role because we were united for a common agenda, for a common goal. Uh, again, I think this, uh, such examples uh, might be uh, useful, you know, to duplicate in uh, other parts, in other countries. Bien, eh, desde luego Amin Maluf tiene un, un ensayo brillante sobre el tema de, de la identidad, identidades asesinas, eh, que se habla mucho de estas identidades verticales y horizontales y, y, y bueno, es todo un reto creo yo para la región eh, este, este tema, eh, en particular con, con las, los frentes abiertos de Irak y de Siria. Uh, fronts open in Iraq and Syria. I don't know if you yourselves have any questions uh, for uh, one of your colleagues or should we give the public the floor? Well, thank you very much to you all. Uh, thank you for being here also, I think, about 12 hours uh, because they started very early this morning, uh, their, their um, uh, meeting, their seminar. They'll be here until Saturday, uh, so they have a very busy schedule. Uh, I hope you can see a bit of Madrid. They wanted to see the museum day today, so you still have an hour and a half. Uh, thank you very much uh, to our four, our four panelists, Raida, uh, Omar, Aya, and André. Thank you to the Konrad Adenauer uh, Stiftung for bringing these uh, young people here. And uh, I think civil society organizations are definitely doing uh, 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 work and filling a gap that other um, uh, parts of, uh, of uh, society uh, are unable to fill and of government and the state, especially in some of these countries. Uh, y bueno, back to, back to some Espanol. Eh, agradecer a nuestras, eh, a nuestras intérpretes, como siempre. Y al Our interpreters, eh, as usual, eh, you're welcome. Eh, and to the to everyone who has come this evening, and I would invite you to please follow our activities online, also on uh, uh, the web, uh, casarabe.es. We have more uh, movies, uh, more films this weekend, so we hope you follow our activities.